Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Jazz Jackrabbit. We better get off this uh, screen fairly quickly, because it goes to demo pretty fast. So let's go get in New Game. We have four difficulty ratings. We have Easy. I like the uh, shift of the graphics here from Baby to Hulk. You got Easy, which is easy. You get a lot of time to explore levels. And uh, basically the difference between difficulty levels is that the harder it is, the less time you have to beat a level, and the fewer hits you can take. And uh, we are actually going to play on easy, which sounds pretty wimpy, but my thing is that I like to explore levels at length. Ever since YouTube expanded its time limit to infinite, I've liked to sprawl out, really stretch my legs and explore things without worrying about time, so we're going to do easy. And uh, also with easy, you take more hits, so we'll just be able to have more fun with the game than if we like... We're on turbo, which is basically basically like enforced speed running or hard even. Even medium has its tough points, and and uh, there are some places even on easy that are no cakewalk either. We're gonna have to choose our difficulty for each area, and the first one is Turtle Terror. We've got nine episodes here, as you can see. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm maneuvering with the keyboard here. This should make for some fun platforming times. Let me tell you. Because uh, I can never really get my gamepad to configure right with this game. You got the uh, regular six episodes that were that made up the full original game. And then when Jazz was released in CD-ROM, you had these three episodes, which were rather tacked on, I thought. We'll get to those eventually, though. And then you have the uh, Holiday Hair. This is only the first Holiday Hair from 1994. There was a 94 and a 95. Um, back then it was a tradition often for popular games to release Christmas mini versions of those. And then you have the bonus levels, which you can play all in one shot. We may or may not do that. But we're going to get in right start on this. Each episode has three planets to explore. We're going to do one planet per episode, starting with Diamondus. They, a lot of the planets use that faux Latin construction. Diamond disc. Maybe it's... Okay, how do I do... Okay, control is... Okay, I, I'm gonna have to figure... Okay, X is jump. Control switches weapons, which we can't do yet. And alt... I guess alt doesn't really do anything. Okay. And... Okay, and Z is fire. Okay, good. This is a pretty normal keyboard setup for me. So here we are on diamonds. Diamond disc. More like... It needs a more epic pronunciation than that, I think. I think it should be Diamondus. Yes, that's what we'll go with. And it's your standard Emerald Hill type zone, although it has palm trees, so I suppose it's actually more like your uh, standard hilltop zone, if you know your uh, Sonic stages. Okay, why am I not getting to that bird there? There are a lot of secret passages to explore. The bird is our companion. His name is Hip Hop, Jazz Hip Hop, ha ha ha. And uh, if we take a hit, he'll go away, but as long as we have him, he'll fire at enemies and help us out offensively. This is our first special weapon. It's a toaster. It's just bigger than your average. It travels bigger and faster than your average bullet, so it's fun to have around. And you can often blow up walls, so uh, that is definitely great to explore. We're going to go to the left. I think that's the more fun side. As you can see, this game was definitely inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog in a number of ways. You've got a fast hero. He runs really fast, except he has a gun, and it's more of a more of an interplanetary type thing we've got going on here. They, this game was inspired by Sonic, but I'd hesitate to say that it's a ripoff. It was designed by Cliff Wazinski and Arion Bruce. Cliff Wazinski, of course, better known now as Cliffy B, best known for the Gears of War franchise. And Arion Bruce, I believe, did work on a little game called Killzone. Maybe not quite as popular, but definitely still popular in its own right. So yeah, a lot of the people involved here, well, okay, I won't say a lot of people, maybe half the people involved, because this game is really the work of four different people. Cliffy B and Ariane Brousse, of course. And then you have two other guys. You have the musician for the game, a composer named Robert Allen, who really did a great job on the music for this game. This is a great, there's your midpoint right there. Did a great job with the soundtrack for this game, Robert Allen. The soundtrack to this game is often misattributed to Alexander Brandon, who did the music for the, in my opinion, highly inferior Jazz Jackrabbit 2. Jazz Jackrabbit 2 seems to enjoy more popularity today, however, because 
it had online multiplayer, which some people, you know... If a game has online multiplayer, even old games that had online multiplayer still are like... still enjoy some measure of popularity, generally. I played Worms Armageddon, I think, as recently as probably one or two years ago in an online context. And uh, also, you have the artwork by Nick Stadler. Nick Stadler, I think, is still doing stuff. That little star I I'm invincible right now, by the way. I'm not doing a very good job of explaining power-ups. These little things right here, these little trinkets are just for collecting for, like, a points bonus. If we get all of them in the level, we'll get a bonus of some sort, like a perfection bonus. But sometimes that's kind of glitched out, and it doesn't really work out correctly. And, uh... The trinkets change from level to level. Right now we have these things called floppy disks. There's an entire generation that probably doesn't know what these things are, which is bonkers to me, but yeah, we'll, we'll end up collecting different little thing of the bobs throughout the game. But yeah, the artwork was done by Nick Stadler. Uh, I think he has a portfolio website you can check out, but he did the artwork for this game. All the graphics and everything were based around his designs. And one thing that really, those are rapid fire guns. If we hold down the button, we can now shoot faster. And the more, more of those rapid-fire icons you get, the faster you can shoot. We can accumulate up to ten of them, I do believe. And here we are at the end of the level. Alright, well, we got almost all the items anyway. I won't go for a double hundred percent every time, but... We'll just make our way through and, uh... And relax. These are rapid-fire missiles. And they, uh, they shoot out in a V-type arc. They are very useful for getting enemies who aren't quite on eye level. Anyway, I keep getting distracted from Nick Stadler. One of the things that struck me about his art style when I first played this game, this is especially evident in the instruction manual, which comes with a uh, comic, an expository comic explaining the plot and everything. Jazz has to, has to save the princess Ava Irlong. From the, uh, from the villainous turtle, Devin Shell. Okay, yeah, I think this is where... There are multiple paths through every level. And it's fun to explore them all and see where they go. See where they end up. But one thing that really struck me about his art style was how strung out the characters looked. I had never seen anything like that before. And, I mean, it was kind of a... It was kind of an interesting way to be edgy. Back when you couldn't really do that sort of things in PC games, which were generally until, you know, the time of What's-Its-Face, Doom and Wolfenstein and all that, were generally oriented more for family audiences. I am missing something. There we go, yeah, let's drop all the way down here. Grab ourselves some rapid fires and a one-up and some invincibility, why don't we? But yeah, so I really appreciated the artwork from that standpoint. It was, it was new and, like, bold and interesting to me at the time. There's no way we can drop down here. Okay, yeah. The uh, platforming detection, you can just kind of run over everything, you know, Mario gap block style. Here is a shield. It will afford us one hit. There is also a fire shield variant that will take four hits. But yeah, those are the four main guys who worked on this game. It, it's their efforts that culminated in Jazz Jackrabbit such as it is, warts and all. And uh, we are definitely going to take our... Ooh, dang. That's a... That's a hell of a jump. Don't get hit, don't get hit. Okay, yeah, I can't shoot through the wall either. That's awesome. Why don't we just uh, not try to get hit here? We are going to be uh, attempting to locate the secret level. Every episode has one planet with a secret level. And here it's... Uh, here it's this world. Diamondus. Go ahead and uh, pop through here. Man, I remember the first time I played this game trying to cram a planet into 10 minutes, and that just that just wasn't working. Come on. Jump off the slope, stupid. This isn't tough. Man, if I had some spring boots, we'll also find some planets later on. You'll get with these little spring shoes. I want that one up, not that one ups carry over between episodes, which is a kind of a crafty way to make sure you can't just accumulate buku lives or anything. We want to go down through here, I do believe. I am doing an unusual amount of time taking. I don't usually... I'm not usually this fast when I play this game. And I think we can get another shield over here. Again, not that the items overlap. Oh, another hip-hop. We don't have two hip-hops following us, though. And, uh... Alright, yeah, here we go. 
we want to come out through here so that we can maybe get some things that we couldn't have if we had come up from here. Although I don't guess it really matters in retrospect. So. Oh, floppy is Three quarter inch floppy is Man, I remember those for sure. And I'm sure a substantial chunk of my audience does. I mean, I don't... I'm not really sure how old my demographic skews. I've probably got plenty of the usual teenagers and stuff, but... See, and this is the great thing about the uh, easy difficulty. We can just walk around doing all the exploring we want, and now we have even more time because we picked up an hourglass. That adds a minute to your clock, and is pretty much necessary in the turbo setting if you want to do any kind of... any kind of exploring whatsoever. And I think we're pretty much near the midpoint of this one. Okay. It doesn't really matter how many items we get in this level. I'm just doing some exploring for your benefit, really, to get you used to kind of the way the world moves quickly. The camera scroll in this game, by the way, super mega excellent. It just looks really great. And we have hit the midway point. I love the way the camera does an excellent job of keeping up with the uh, with jazz and everything. Always stays focused on him no matter how fast you're moving. Which is... We're about to get this shoe power up here. We are about to really book it. This is what Sonic should be right here. Well, minus the occasional stopping for one-ups that don't really matter. There we... Yeah, you can just tear through... No worry about enemies, not in this segment anyway. But we're going to want to be careful. We're not going to want to go too fast just yet, because once we get out of here... Let's see, what's across the way? Here we go. We're going to want to be really careful right here. Nothing through the wall here, alright. We're going to want to be really careful because... No! There we go. We want to hug up against the wall right here and go through here to the secret level. When you found this sign, you know you found the secret level. And in this particular secret level, we get to turn into a birdie ourselves. Although, I'm going to change over to the regular blaster so I don't waste my rapid fires. And in the secret level, you do want to kind of spend your time just tooling around, exploring things. We got our little bird friends here. They're free of their cage. Yay! And it's really unfortunate that these guys don't overlap. Because we would just have, like, an armada of hip-hops at our disposal. Here we go. Oh, man. I am, like, the coolest hip-hop ever. And secret levels are basically a chance to uh, get away from enemies, collect a lot of treasure, move around without fear of reprisal or getting hit or anything. This, le this particular secret level moves in a circle, which you can afford to do because we can fly through it. The terrain is... Very unusual for a Jazz Jackrabbit level. Yeah, carrots aren't really necessary, actually. You can't get hit or hurt in secret levels. Unless there are some environmental hazards that I never noticed. And you can still use a spring as a bird, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we'll go with it. And I think we have about gotten every item we can here. This is a fairly short one as far as zero will go. Some of them are much more spread out and sprawling and fun to explore. Let's, uh, okay, yeah, dead end wall. Let's fly. This is also, since I guess we can fire, since I guess we can just piss bullets at light speed, I guess it makes sense that this is the one secret level where there's a boss. Just this kind of turtle guy who follows you around. Very tough to not get hit by. There we go. You want to get in a spot like right above his head where you can hover and just pump bullets into him until he dies. And that's it for Diamondus. We will move on next time to the next planet, Tube Electric. And uh, we didn't get the just we didn't get to explore a bonus level, which is different from a secret level. But perhaps next time in Tube Electric when we're not worried about finding a secret level.